Here's my tutorial for solving equations with variables on both sides. It's chapter 1.3 in your textbook. Uh, feel free to open a web page to the textbook and follow uh, along with what the book says. But uh, we'll take notes on this. First off, um, in order to solve equations with variables on both sides, first, number one thing, use inverse operations uh, until the variable is only on one side. So you're really concentrated on the terms with the variable in it. Example, I have 4x plus 8 equals 3x plus 17. I want to get rid of the um, variable on one side. So I have 3x. Uh, my suggestion is to start with the variable with the lowest co coefficient. Uh, 3 is lower than 4, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I get uh, 3x minus 3x goes to 0, and I did remove that term then. So I only have 1x plus 8 equals 17. Now, I can solve it like a one-step uh, equation, or a two-step equation later on it's for some. Uh, 1x is the same as x, and I subtract 8 from both sides, and I end up with x equals 9. And I can look back to it, so 4 times 9 is uh, 36, plus 8 gives me 44. Now, 3 times 9 is 27, 27 plus 17 does give me 44 as well, so I, it checks out. Yeah, so a suggestion is to eliminate the variable with the lowest coefficient. Now, there are three different cases because there will not, not always be um, an answer. A unique solution, uh, x equals a, is like what we had here for our first example. There might be a chance that um, all the variables go away and because um, the variables are equal on both sides. And when I subtract, there's only numbers left. If you have something that looks like a equals b, so a number equals a different number, uh, in that case, that's false, uh, you could say, but uh, the answer is no solution. If there's an infinite number of solutions, that looks like a equals a. And you can, um, you can see that any value of x will work for it. So let's try some, some examples, and I put one of each in here. Uh, so for our first one, we use the distributive property. Um, 3 times 5x gives me 15x. 3 times 2 gives me 6. Uh, and then we subtract 15x from both sides, and we end up with 6 equals 0. 6 cannot equal 0. So what is the case here is um, this is a equals b. This is no solution. No matter what value you put in for x, this is going to be false. Uh, it's just not going to work. Then for our second one, use the distributive property. And you'll notice something as you start to solve it. Uh, you'll notice that both sides are identical. I end up with negative 100 equals negative 100. That's an A equals A. That's an infinite number of solutions. Uh, whatever value, no matter negative, positive, um, you put in there, you're going to end up with it being true. One side is going to be equal to the other. Now, our third one, um, so we start to solve. We try to get our variables to one side. Our lowest coefficient is 2x. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to end up with x minus 4 equals 1. Add 4. End up with x equals 5. This is a unique solution. But you just notice how what I boxed was what x equals. These are special cases. Um, and this unique solution, you just put the um, answer as x equals 5. For no solution, you have to show that you're getting a number equaling something different. And for uh, infinite solutions, you need to show that you end up with the same thing on both sides. Okay, 
Here's an example. You can see the answer over here, but um, I'm walking through. I do combining like terms. Oh, this doesn't even have variables on both sides. Hmm. But uh, you do distributive property here, um, combining like terms, and then um, you're solving for your variable. And one thing that I did not put down here is I didn't multiply both sides by negative 1. Uh, I, I didn't show it. I did do it. And hopefully this next one will have variables on both sides. Yes, it does. So I combine like terms first. Then I start um, first moving my variables to one side. Uh, negative 15 was the lower um, coefficient, so I added 15x to both sides. And then I divide both sides by 3 to get x equals negative 5.